Peace be with you. <laughs> My name is Alan Kiesler. Welcome to the Institute of All Intelligent Life. We are continuing our weekly English chat. I had announced yesterday during the Urdu chat that I would not be giving this chat at this time because I thought, wrongly, that uh, Zain Khan's interview of me would be broadcast at this same time. But then I learned that, no, it is already, <laughs> it has already been posted. So uh, you can view that interview that Zain Khan did with myself just by going to Zain Khan dot live, excuse me, Zain Khan live dot com, and you can see that interview at any time. So uh, I actually just found that out a few minutes ago. I was expecting to go on that and watch that then, but uh, at this time, but then I saw that it was already available. So I'm uh, going to do the same thing as I did yesterday because I'm unprepared for <laughs> a class on extraterrestrial spirituality as I was doing uh, in the past few weeks. So I will just uh, repeat in English what I said yesterday morning that I was going to a memorial service for a good friend of mine who had passed away a few days ago uh, in Santa Cruz which is about an hour's drive from here. So I did go to that and it was a very wonderful deeply spiritual program. And uh, as I mentioned yesterday also in Urdu, another friend of mine uh, passed away this past week whom I had even lived with in his home when I was a young student. And my parents were here in the United States and I had gone back to uh, Pakistan, actually to India, because I went to school in India. My, my parents were living in Pakistan. So I had gone back early to the beginning of the school year, which was in June, and they were still doing some work here in America for a few months. So I lived with that friend, with that friend's family, and his mother was very kind to me, just like she was my mother. So I have very, very fond memories of that friend, Bill Marble. His parents were also Christian missionaries. Uh, so both those... Uh, Friends of mine passed away this past week, so I've been thinking a lot about mortality, <laughs> about death. So, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> that's not a serious disease. I just have a little allergies, a little cough from allergies. And as you can see, <laughs> there are a lot of flowers here in Palo Alto, too. I met my mother-in-law's home in Palo Alto, which is on the road coming from Esparto going to Santa Cruz. So we stopped here previous night, and then we spent uh, the day in Santa Cruz, and then back here, and we will spend some, we spent last night again here. <coughs> so in Esparto, there's lots of flowers and lots of pollen in the air, and <laughs> There is, too. I didn't think about it when I chose to sit out here under these flowers. But uh. <coughs> Anyway, I'm not going to say anything more. We are all frail beings. We become sick. <laughs> we die. We suffer old age. <coughs> we can't avoid those things. <laughs> but we can be happy anyway because we have a wonderful... God, who <laughs> is our best friend and is kindly guiding us and protecting us. Acha, Muhammad Bilal says, Ha, bhai, pata nahi challa. Yes, brother, we don't know, I guess you mean, when, when we may die. I think that's what he was referring to. So I'm requesting everyone... Uh, Muhammad Khalid Khan Yazi B says, Cha Cha Abi Tak Zinda Ho. Lekin aap se darkhwast hai aaj hum angrezi mein aap sawal bhi angrezi mein puch lein kyunki ye angrezi chat hai. This is an English chat so I want the questions to be in English too if possible and I will answer in English. 
Didar Ali says, praying for your health, love from Lord Kana. Thank you very much, Didar Ali Sahib. I've been to Lord Kana several times. The Bhutto <laughs> family's home, very wonderful city. Very, very unusual. I experienced a lot of love and broad-minded, very broad-minded. The people of Larkana, the natives of Larkana, are a very special uh, type of people. Of course, Sindhis generally, I've experienced also, are very loving and broad-minded, but I especially experienced that in Larkana. People of different religions are living together in harmony. There are a lot of Hindus and Christians in Larkana also, and they lived in my experience, I, I witnessed myself uh, a lot of love and harmony between people of different religions in Larkana. So I have that special fond memory of your city, Didar Ali Sahib. Acha Muhammad Khalid Khan Niazi says, What do you think about Pak versus Afghanistan cricket match? <laughs> to tell you the truth, I don't. Uh, watch these cricket matches much. I don't even follow them, nor do I follow American sports at all. So many of my friends and uh, colleagues, they all watch football or basketball or baseball, but I, I consider it uh, mostly a waste of time. Of course, I always appreciate Imran Khan and the <laughs> World Cricket Cup that he led Pakistan to win, but I don't really watch sports, and I, don't, I didn't even know about these cricket matches. I did hear that Pakistan played India, and that Pakistan, uh, I didn't even know Pakistan has had a cricket match or is having a cricket match with Afghanistan. Acha, Jiri Ahmed, Allah bless his soul and his family. Yes, thank you very much. Zain Khan, why prophets never talk about ETs? Oh, they do. <laughs> um, angels are ETs. And uh, they're not from this planet. They're from <laughs> elsewhere. We may call it heaven, heavenly planets, but they are ETs. They're not, from ter they're not terrestrials. <laughs> so certainly prophets talk about angels. And uh, jinn also are, they may be from this earth, but mostly, as I understand, they are also from other realms. So, and uh, I was very pleased to learn recently that uh, Imam uh, Al Ghazali, the perhaps greatest Muslim philosopher and thinker of the period around 1000, uh, Hijri, he was very well aware of extraterrestrials, and he even said that when we pray in the namaz, that, uh, I'm trying to remember in just a second, At-Tahiyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa taibatu, As-Salaamu alaykum ayuha nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, Islam alayna wa ala ibad salihin. So we call for peace and blessings upon the Holy Prophet and all of us and all the believers in Allah, all the worshippers of Allah, all Muslims. And Al Ghazali says, Imam Ghazali says, that refers to not only Muslims on this planet, it refers to believers in Allah on other planets also. And he even says that those residents of other planets, they communicate with each other from one planet to another. So um, there certainly are mentions uh, of extraterrestrials by the holy prophets and by the great imams. Um, <clears throat> Muhammad Usman says, Jawan ho gaye 
hang up. <laughs> uh, please, English. <laughs> He's saying that I am young, in case you didn't know the Urdu. <laughs> Inshallah, I will be here for a few years. 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 Anil Ahanif says, please, pr- please pray for Pakistan. Everyone is frustrated. We need lots of dua. I pray for Pakistan every day. Every day I pray, Bismillah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Allahumma, Sali ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammadin, kama salaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim, inna ka Hamid al-Majid. اللهم بارك على محمدين وعلى آل محمدين كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. Whenever I say that درود شريف إبراهيمي, I always think آل محمدين means, of course, all the followers and especially family of the Holy Prophet peace be upon him. But for me, especially that means Pakistan. Not only are there many Sayyids and Sayyidnas in Pakistan, <laughs> but the whole country is really the special family, beloved of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. Just as I said in the Zain Khan interview, which you can see, I urge you to watch that also. And there I mentioned how there is this famous, maybe not famous enough, but there is this Hadith uh, about the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, that he said, I am an Arab, but Arabia is not in me. I am not of Hind, but Hind is in me. And Hind means the land along the Indus. Indus and Hind are the same word, a slightly different pronunciation according to the English language, we drop the H. <clears throat> so, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, also spoke specially about Pakistan. The land along the Indus was especially dear to him in his heart. So, we should all daily pray for Pakistan. And please don't be frustrated, be patient. This is a trial. Pakistan is undergoing a preparation. <laughs> Pakistan is being purified. Just like when a blacksmith puts the, or a goldsmith, I mean, when a goldsmith puts the gold into the fire, it purifies the gold. So Pakistan is now being put by the great goldsmith God <laughs> through the fire to purify you. So Pakistan is being purified. Don't be frustrated. Be patient. Be happy that this purification is happening. Okay, let's just see. <clears throat> There's a lot of comments. Jana Shah says, Sir, I'm Sindhi. Tunjo Sindhi ahe, Jana Shah sahib. I did learn a little Sindhi when I was living in Sindh many years ago. But it's a wonderful, rich language. And poetry of Sindhi is some of the deepest, richest poetry in the world. Muhammad Khalid Khan Niazi says, Can you come in my city, Mianwali, Pakistan? Prime Minister of Pak's city. Uh, I will be happy to come to Miawali or to any country or any city that anyone wants me to come to. All you have to do is provide my and my wife's <laughs> plane tickets. And uh, we have promised to come. As I explained yesterday in Urdu, my good wife is not in very good health. In fact, she's in a lot of pain often and it's difficult, very difficult for her to walk. She has to use a cane to walk with difficulty. And I had actually told Zain Khan, he asked me 
recently if I would be coming to Pakistan in October because he's he wants to make a documentary about me traveling to different parts of Pakistan and I told him I may not be able to come because my wife's health is not very good and she may not be able to travel and I don't think I should leave her alone in this condition of health but then she told me just day before yesterday as we were actually driving here to Palo Alto from Esparto she said I will come with you to Pakistan even if you have to take me in a wheelchair so we are coming inshallah in October by October to Pakistan and uh, we at least I will be happy to visit Miawali or Peshawar I see Umar Farooq has asked if I've been to Peshawar yes I've been to Peshawar several times in fact some of my favorite videos I ever made were sitting on the roof of the home of a friend where I was staying and with the mountains of Afghanistan in the background Pakhtunistan <laughs> and appreciating the hospitality of the Pakhtun people in Peshawar the people are all over Pakistan people are very hospitable but the Pakhtans are perhaps the most hospitable a plane going overhead this is not far from the San Francisco airport here so we frequently have planes so yes Peshawar I have been and I'll be happy to go again if you arrange the transportation and place to stay Didar Ali says you are absolutely right Christians and Hindus are living with harmony and love in Larkana Sindh is a land of peace you are a true fakir, fakir type of person me and polite and loving everyone yes Sindh and especially Larkana is a land of peace and love and harmony Alhamdulillah Okay, let's see. Any other questions? Usama Khan, which flower is this behind you? Uh, this is a oleander. Oleanders are, we have oleanders in our property in Esparto too, but they're white color. These are pinkish ones. Uh, oleanders are very popular in California because uh, <clears throat> they don't need any water. You can plant them and you don't have to water them for years. They will grow very luxuriously like this. Very beautiful flowers. <coughs> Oleander. Usama Khafi says, Happy birthday in advance. Thank you very much. Jana Shah says, Did you, Sir, did you see Holy Prophet in your dream again recently? Uh, no. I have only seen Holy Prophet once, his full body in 1983 or 80, so about, I can't remember the exact year, but it was about 1983, which I described yesterday in the chat. And then I saw again in, 19, uh, in 2012 in Manchester, England. I was at a friend's house and there Holy Prophet instructed me to repeat the Ibrahimi, the Rud, the Rud Sharif Ibrahimi. And he said he would appear to me again as he did in so many years earlier. And that time I didn't see him though I had a very wonderful vision. And then he was leaving and I was crying. I said, no, I wanted to see you. So finally, he showed me his eye only. I saw his eye. And I, that was the second time. The third time I had Ziyarat, I didn't see him at all. Uh, but that was in 2017, just two years ago. And that time he told me very clearly, very strongly, as he had in 2012, he told me very clearly and strongly that I am a Muslim. He's talking about me. You are a Muslim, he said. You're already a Muslim, because people even then were telling me, why don't you become a Muslim? And he said, you are already a Muslim. And <clears throat> he said, you understand Islam. They do not, he said. <laughs> By they, I think he meant Muslims, people who call themselves Muslims they don't really understand Islam very well. He told me that I do understand. And then in 2017, when he spoke to me, he made an even stronger statement about other religions. He said, anyone, he was specifically talking, I think, about Sikh religion, especially Guru Nanak's teachings and the followers of what we call Sikhism. Uh, he said that any follower of any religion who follows the Shariat, 
of that religion will also be successful. Means Successful means they will develop spiritual qualities and love of God, and they will go to heaven. So we have a very narrow understanding of Islam if we think only Muslims will go to heaven, as many Muslims have told me even. Uh, so the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, told me, both in 2012 and then even more clearly in 2017, that Islam is not something narrow. Islam doesn't mean what most Muslims think, uh, that everyone needs to follow only the Sharia of Muhammad, peace be upon him, otherwise they will go to hell or something. No. He told me directly, clearly, whatever religion, any religion, if any person sincerely follows the laws and teachings of that religion, they will be successful. So only those three times I've had that sort of ziyarat, the first time actually seeing him full, his full form. Okay, Zain Khan is asking. Zain Khan is also always asking very good questions about ETs. Why ETs erasing memory after abduction? Why they don't let us know they exist? Um, well, they don't always erase the memory. They usually do. And there are several reasons for that. Uh, in fact, in my case, I was nine years old when I first met an ET. And although I had a vague memory of it, but it wasn't very clear. I couldn't quite remember what had happened, although I knew that place in the forest where I had seen that, ex that extraterrestrial and that flying saucer. I knew that there was something very special about it, but I couldn't quite remember. And it wasn't until many years later, after the second time that I met that extraterrestrial, that, the f that much more of the memory came back. There's still more that I haven't remembered. But So why do they erase or, or screen our memory like this? Uh, one reason is because if we remembered everything, uh, we might talk about it too much and people might criticize us and say we're crazy and, or we might get afraid. That's one reason. Another reason is that the, an agreement was made between the American government and some extraterrestrials in 1954, I believe. Uh, President Eisenhower met Zain Khan Zaheb. You yourself interviewed President Eisenhower's great-granddaughter, who also talked about that the fact that her great-grandfather, when he was president, had met extraterrestrials, right? So um, they agreed, the president of the United States and the American military and the American people who were involved in the secret, very, very top, top secret, even more top secret than nuclear weapons and everything, the most top secret uh, category in the American intelligence is extraterrestrials. So those people involved in that, uh, they agreed that they would not tell the people about the presence of the extraterrestrials. The extraterrestrials requested that for whatever reason. So that's one reason. Not only the American government, but other governments also made such agreements. So that's one reason why uh, we don't know very much about extraterrestrials. Uh, so the ETs are screening our memories and the Human beings involved are also avoiding talking about because these agreements existed. And in fact, uh, when one group of ETs, I think the Orion group, they wanted to abduct human beings and do scientific experiments on us, some of us, and th that uh, the American government, I think, requested, uh, please don't, uh, if you agree not to harm them at all, and you tell us the full details about all the people who you have abducted, and uh, if you erase their memories so they don't remember the trauma of having been abducted and having been experimented upon. So that's another reason uh, why people don't remember usually when they've been taken by extraterrestrials. Well, maybe not usually, but maybe usually, but. There are thousands, probably hundreds of thousands, of people who have uh, memories of meeting extraterrestrials. So that's some of the reasons why, very good question, Zayn Khan Sahib, why uh, memories are often erased by extraterrestrials. They have that technology to make us forget what we have experienced. 
Okay. Tayyabazeb says, please describe the hadith in Urdu again. Hazuri Pak, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ne farmaya, main Arab hoon, lekin Arabistan mujh mein nahi hai. Main Hind ka nahi hoon, balke Hind mujh mein hai. To Hind ka matlab hai, wo khata, jo Indus River ke kinare pe hai, aur jab نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کہتے ہیں کہ مجھ میں ہے یا مجھ میں نہیں ہے مطلب ہے دل میرے دل میں ہے مطلب میں اس کو یاد کرتا ہوں میں اس کو اس سے پیار کرتا ہوں تو ہم ایسے کہہ سکتے ہیں اس حدیث کا مطلب ہے میں عرب ہوں لیکن عربستان میرے دل میں نہیں ہے میں پاکستان کا نہیں ہوں بلکہ پاکستان میرے دل میں ہے ہمیشہ so Pakistan is in my heart, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, said. Acha. Let's see. The sun is getting a little bright here. Um, Shardil Salim Baba, I want to talk. Oh, you can talk here by chatting, by typing here. Mian Azam bin Zia says, nice to hear, refreshing with beautiful hairstyle, <laughs> smart look. This is not a hairstyle. This is, I, I was in a little rush this morning, and I didn't get a chance to comb my hair properly. <laughs> uh, yes, your love with Pakistan and very silent upcoming best future. Yes, Pakistan has a very glorious future. As this period of purification proceeds, and Pakistanis become real Pak, real pure souls, you will see. Pakistan's destiny to be the leader of the world spiritually and lead the world to peace and justice and truth and love and harmony that will start becoming more manifest. It's already started, Naya Pakistan. <laughs> but the economy is not so good now. I've said many times that's mainly because the international banksters have tricked Pakistan and all the countries of the world into taking so many loans by bribing the government officials. That's how they do it. They bribe the government officials. Who knows how many millions of dollars they may give them to, to agree that their country will take a huge loan from the World Bank or International Monetary Fund or some. And then they know, everybody knows, they'll never be able to pay those loans back. And they have high interest rates. They'll just have to struggle to pay the interest back. So Pakistan is now stuck. It's called a debt trap. Pakistan and almost all the countries in the world are paying huge, huge uh, interest to these international banksters. So that's why Pakistan's financial situation is so bad. And I've said again and again, <laughs> if you know Imran Khan or somebody who knows him, please tell them. He should stop paying these so-called debts. They're not debts. It was all cheating, fraud. The whole banking system, the whole money system is a fraud. They simply print money out of paper, on paper, out of thin air, and they make money that way. Or else now they don't even print money. They just, with a few computer strokes, they create a, trilli a trillion dollars. When America had the big financial crisis in 2008 and all these big banks were going bankrupt, the Federal Reserve Bank simply, with a few computer strokes, gave them trillions of dollars out of nothing. So this whole money system is a fraud. And the loans that are given to governments around the world is also a big fraud. So Imran Khan should understand that. Please explain <laughs> to him if you have any access to him. Stop agreeing to this fraud. Stop paying back these fraudulent so-called loans. Don't worry. Trust in Allah. He will protect us. Okay, let's see. Taimur Khan is asking, do you practice religious muraqaba? Yes, I practice muraqaba. And the main muraqaba I do is zikr. I practice zikr, not only using the Arabic names of Allah, but also 
in every language that I know and love, I chant names of God and meditate by that way. Um, Ifi Raja says, no, it doesn't matter which country you from, insan ke andar, insaniyat, uski soch ke andar, uski soch ke andar. Uh, insaniyat baki ho, to ya dunya ka sab se acha insan hai. Haan, sab se acha insan hai, wo jo puri dunya insaniyat ki mohabbat karta hai. Kashif Irfan Wahib, Subhanallah, sir, Subhanallah. Zain Khan again. That uh, Zain is someone else. I am not Zain who interviewed you. Okay, sorry. Okay. Kashif Irfan Wahab, Jazakallah Khairan, sir. Jazakallah. Okay, let's see. Sher Dil Salim says, I need to discuss about Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I can't talk here. Um, okay, then we will try to arrange talking. I will send you a private message, inshallah. But I'm really very busy. I'm not at home now, and I have another program today that I have to go to soon, which is like an hour's drive away also. So then I have to drive back home this afternoon, this evening. So it may be a couple of days before I can even try to <laughs> arrange a talk with you. Okay, we will end there. Thank you all very, very much. And thank you to Zain Khan, who's not the interviewer, interviewee Zain Khan, for asking questions about extraterrestrials. And that's a very, very important topic for all of us to understand. Essential to not only understand that extraterrestrials exist, but to understand what are their agendas, because some of them have an agenda of trying to dominate and control and manipulate the Earth. Uh, we call them shaitani, <laughs> shaitans, shayateen, devils, uh, or malevolent jinn. They're extraterrestrials, especially uh, reptilians. There are a number of, there are good reptilians too, but there are some reptilian races that are very powerful and evil and have tried for a long time to be controlling and dominating this planet. Fortunately, Really, just the last few years, the angelic extraterrestrials have come in great numbers and have reversed that satanic influence. And now heavenly influence is permeating our planet more. <laughs> so we should all be very, very happy to understand this, that uh, by the mercy of God, humanity is now starting not only in Naya Pakistan, but in Naya Dunya, not only a new Pakistan, but a new world. A new world. This is prophesied in the Bible. A new Jerusalem, new heaven and new earth is prophesied. In the Hadith also, we have so many prophecies about the coming of world peace. After a great struggle, of course. The Bible also talks about Armageddon. So there will be a great struggle. We're in the middle of that right now. We are undergoing this right now. The Ghazwa uh, Hind is also in progress right now. <laughs> the Armageddon is in progress right now. The Third World War, whatever you want to call it, which was going to be a nuclear war, but which, by the mercy of Allah, has been prevented or reduced substantially at least, so that we're not going to destroy all the cities in the world by nuclear weapons as was expected and prophesied even. 80% uh, of the population, there were prophecies, 50, 60, 70, 80, even 90% of the human beings were going to die in this war. But now that's not going to happen. The destiny of our planet has been changed by the mercy of Allah. Because of the sincere prayers and efforts of good Muslims, and by Muslims I don't mean only what you call Muslims, what most people call Muslims, but Muslims mean those who have surrendered to God. So good Christians, even good Hindus, Buddhists, Sikhs, Jews, Taoists, Jains, Zoroastrians, Parsis, all good people, African, Native Americans, all indigenous 
religious followers also, due to their good prayers and peaceful efforts, the destiny of the world has changed. And we are not going to undergo that horrible war. But we're undergoing it right now. We're suffering, but at least that huge nuclear conflagration has been avoided, changed by the mercy of Allah. Okay, so be happy. <laughs> Allah Hafiz. May God protect us all.